She's uh, over the last two months or so, she's really taken a point of Those are the things that hoping you call me in the world. All right, if we're all set, uh, on behalf of the North Country Chamber of Commerce, uh, welcome to this, the annual release of our annual issue survey. And uh, after we uh, summarize some of the results and findings of the survey, we will, as always, ceremoniously unveil the 2014 Business Confidence Index, this being the one we unveiled just about a year ago today. Uh, each year, we do a comprehensive survey of all of our members, uh, approximately 4,200 across Clinton, Franklin, Essex, Hamilton, and Northern Warren counties. Uh, and uh, has, as has been the case in the past, uh, we had approximately a 10% response rate, which we consider very strong. Shows always show a strong interest in being heard and having their voice uh, added to the collective voice. And uh, we suggest uh, for a uh, blind uh, email survey uh, that represents a very strong uh, sample and provides uh, what can be regarded as a very credible expression uh, of the collective positions of the North Country business community. Uh, so we thank uh, all the participants, as we always do every year, we thank them uh, for taking a few moments when they receive that survey to respond and take part. Uh, touching on the uh, on the issues that we surveyed about this year, we always try to focus on a few, you can't make the survey too long, uh, but a few of the topics that we know are kind of the hot issues, the things that are most in play uh, in Washington and Albany that uh, relate to business, uh, that it would be uh, useful to have a snapshot of the opinion of the business community to share with our federal and state legislators, and we did that again this year. On the federal level, when asked to characterize uh, their position on the current levels of federal spending and debt, uh, an overwhelming 87% indicated they are, quote, very concerned, unquote, uh, believing that federal spending and debt must be decreased. Uh, when asked what the President and Congress should do to support stronger economic growth and job creation, uh, they provided the following answers in the following order. 88% reduce mandates and regulations on employers. 86% provide tax relief for businesses and job creation. 80% reduce federal spending. And 75% increase domestic energy production, including gas <coughs> and oil. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise that, um, as we did a couple of years ago, but didn't do last year, uh, we repeated basic questions about the Affordable Care Act from the perspective uh, of the business and employer community and uh, got a snapshot of, uh, of feelings uh, about that act uh, as it now is, is rolling out. Uh, the individual mandate is in place. Uh, the employer mandate is still on the books, although has now been delayed once again, uh, but is still out there on the horizon. Um, the, uh, the business community in the region told us, in their opinion, uh, the Affordable Care Act, as it takes effect, will have the following impact on business and employers. 75% believe it will increase costs for their business and most employers. 67% believe it will eliminate jobs and discourage new job creation. 37% believe it will harm the North Country's hospitals and health care systems, while only 12% believe it will strengthen the North Country's hospitals and health care system. 43% uh, do not believe it will result in the uninsured obtaining coverage. Uh, so there's a strong 43% that don't believe that uh, for all that is occurring that it will end up resulting in the desired end. Only 18% said they believe it will result in most of the uninsured obtaining coverage. Uh, so clearly a lot of skepticism about the effectiveness of the act um, and uh, uh, concerns about uh, what its impacts are. Uh, and it's interesting to see that now that that is a little stronger than it was two years ago. Uh, but now obviously it is, uh, the rubber is starting to hit the road. Uh, the exchanges are up, um, and so there's more awareness uh, or a, more of a sense on the part of business as to how it actually is starting to play out. In terms of implementation, 59% support repeal of the individual mandate, which is at this point taking full effect on March 31st of this year. Another 24% support delay of that mandate. With regard to the already delayed mandate on employers with more than 25 employees, 64% support repeal, as opposed to what so far has occurred, uh, which is delayed. Uh, on other issues, 87% oppose proposals at the federal and or state levels to mandate that private employers provide paid family leave to employees, and 76% question further extensions and unemployment benefits uh, at this point. 
on New York State issues. On the state level, um, we were pleased but not surprised. It confirms what we have been hearing from our membership. Uh, but now we have a strong collective affirmation of what we've been hearing. 93% uh, in favor of Governor Cuomo's proposed tax relief measures uh, for business and upstate manufacturers. 92% uh, oppose the use of taxpayer funds for political campaigns. 92% support significant mandate relief for local governments and schools to help reduce property taxes. 95% support reform of the state's scaffold law to apply a comparative negligence standard, thereby reducing insurance and construction costs and boosting construction employment in the state. 83% support the well-regulated extraction of the state's natural gas resources in the southern tier. Uh, when asked for their top three priorities uh, for this year in Albany, number one, support for upstate economic development, number two, tax relief for business and manufacturers, and number three, mandate relief. Uh, we also try to include each year a couple of timely regional issues or projects uh, to just uh, get a sense of opinion across the region. We asked two such questions this year. And I, uh, I think uh, Billy Jones uh, will be pleased and may want to may want to comment afterwards. 88% uh, support for approval of the proposed occupancy uh, charge in Franklin County dedicated to tourism, marketing, and development, along with enhancement of the Clinton County occupancy charge. Uh, so a strong expression on the regional business community. We think this is important, by the way. One of the things that we always talk about and are committed to is gaining support of the entire regional business community for things that, things that may only be in one community or one county or one area, and in turn hoping that they'll then support things elsewhere in the region. We have to mutually support uh, things across this region too. You may not have heard me say this before, punch above our way. Um, and this, this is an example of that. Uh, go on to the parochial days where uh, maybe you might have expected the business community and counties outside of Franklin to either not care, not, well, not be interested in that question, or maybe be opposed because, oh, that's something in another county, you know, that, that might somehow be against us. But to understand that we all do better when everybody does better. Uh, every county does better when the neighboring counties are doing better, and so it's it's good to it's good to see that coming from the region, and I think it's significant to see it in that context. It's another example of the culture that's arising here in the North Country of mutual support uh, and not old lines of parochialism. The second question elicited uh, an overwhelming expression: 97% support for the planned expansion of the terminal at Plattsburgh International Airport, including U.S. customs operations for international flights. Uh, and other air activities. Uh, so uh, a, a very uh, a very timely snapshot of a number of issues. These are being shared today with our state and federal representatives and officials uh, and will be used in the coming months in our advocacy efforts uh, on our own and in partnership with others in both Albany and Washington uh, on these and other issues. And so uh, again, our thanks to all of those who took the time to respond uh, to give us this collective voice. We then uh, each year uh, take this uh, this opportunity to gauge the business confidence index. Uh, we ask uh, businesses uh, do they believe uh, in the current year uh, compared to last year do they believe their business will be up their business activity whatever that is uh, for their particular uh, line of activity uh, or do they believe uh, their business will remain steady or do they believe their business will decline. Uh, we combine the business uh, going up and the business steady uh, to create uh, the business confidence index, an expression uh, of how folks uh, believe things will be uh, will be doing here in the North Country. Um, and this year we've done that again, and I'm going to ask uh, Kim Murray, Chair of the Chamber, and Greg McConnell, Chair of our Government Affairs Division, to unveil the results of this year's business confidence index. 2014, <laughs> a very strong majority of 58% uh, indicate that their business uh, activity will be up this year, another 35% that their business will remain steady for a business confidence index of 92%. Um, one of the things uh, that, uh, that we see is that this, uh, this perception, once again, of uh, of things in their own backyard and with their own business is much stronger here in the North Country than it is about the country uh, at large. Um, nationally, uh, 25, only 25% compared to 58% here, only 25% believe uh, that the national economy will move upward this year. 
Yet 58% believe their own business here in the North Country, therefore things in their immediate backyard uh, are on the up. So that's, uh, that's uh, more than two to one. 33% um, actually believe it's going to go down. So there's this amazing, again, culture of optimism and resilience um, that, uh, that is here in the North Country that makes them feel better about their own backyard than what they feel about the country at large. And I've suggested in the past, and will again, um, that if you went back 20 years ago and uh, did this sort of thing, and we didn't do that back then, but if we did, uh, I have no hesitation in predicting that you would have seen the opposite. Uh, somehow things are rosier someplace else uh, than they are here. Uh, but uh, increasingly, and we think for good reasons, uh, business people see things uh, in, uh, uh, in more positive terms in the immediate backyard than they do necessarily those other places. Where in the old days, you would have heard, well, if only we were there. If only we were like that place. If only we were like someplace else in the country. 58% uh, versus uh, 25% believe business is going to be up here, and then you're probably pretty happy to be here than to be those other places that you might have thought of years ago. Uh, we think there are a number of valid reasons for that optimism that the business community is particularly aware of, because they're the business community, and they have reason to be even more aware of these things uh, than the general public might be. Uh, the strong upswing in Canadian tourism, shopping, uh, and investment, uh, particularly the, uh, on the investment uh, uh, and um, our economic developers will confirm that there is an active um, array of prospects out there and, and an active level of interest uh, in this area from north of the border that is of a level that we really hadn't seen at this level since the late 1990s. Uh, it's back, uh, they're interested, uh, Canadians, uh, including Quebecers, uh, they're prosperous, so their business uh, confidence is high, consumer confidence is higher than here, their banking system is strong, they never went through the recession we did anywhere near the same extent, and they're now doing very well, thank you. Uh, they're still a resource-driven driven nation, and the world is starting to get hungry again for the resources that they produce, um, which, is, uh, which is giving them a lot of capacity for outward investment uh, beyond what's required to invest internally in Canada. So, as we have benefited from foreign direct investment in the past, we will continue to, so long as we do the right things, and we are doing the right things, and the business community believes we're doing the right things, um, to, uh, to attract uh, our share, or more than our share, of that foreign direct investment here. But also, a significant drop in area unemployment over the last 12 months, with real growth in local manufacturing employment. The North Country, uh, if you're not aware of this, in 2013, the 12 months of 2013, this area was the only area in the state of New York that grew manufacturing employment. Uh, even while unemployment uh, dropped uh, statewide, uh, as it did here in the North Country, uh, the rest of the state still continued to lose, to have a net loss in manufacturing employment. Uh, so the, the job growth, that, that change, that downward trend in unemployment isn't elsewhere in the state because manufacturing is doing better. It isn't yet. And that's why the governor is putting emphasis on upstate manufacturing, because it, it needs an additional boost. Uh, and here in the North Country, we're positioned to even make more out of that boost, um, because we've kind of got things turned around. We've got some things happening here, and a big part of it, of course, is that special connectivity we have to this dynamic to the North that's uh, letting us grow manufacturing where nobody else is. Now give us more relief, more tools, more support. Uh, we have reason to be optimistic uh, looking over the next couple of years. The major contract wins for Bombardier and Novabus and the commitment of Prevo uh, to establish its U.S. operation in Plattsburgh uh, to be launched this year. The strong performance of the North Country Regional Economic Development Council with its third win in December, I think has been taken note of, and sales tax and occupancy tax receipts uh, at record levels uh, here in Clinton County. I think those and other things <coughs> create the obvious story that, you know, this isn't some fairy tale, oh, la di da you know, they all feel optimistic, but why? There are real solid on-the-ground reasons to feel optimistic, and again, these are things that the business community is, um, is really the canary in the mine. Uh, they're the ones that really have a sense of what's really happening out there in terms of employment and business and investment and finances uh, before the average person really feels or maybe catches up uh, with trends that are occurring. And so we have reason to feel very good about their optimism um, and reason to take it in part as an affirmation that uh, what we're doing in the Development Corporation and the IDA and, and all of our economic development partners across the North Country are doing 
uh, is correct. The strategies are correct. Things are working. Uh, adjust as needed, but but stay on the stay on the tracks that we're on. I'm going to invite uh, Kim to offer some comments. Kim. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, this is awesome. The 58 percent of our business community knowing that their business will be positive and going up for 2014 is a tribute to the community, to the business folks in this area, in this room. Thank you so much to everyone who responded, who gave us the <coughs> optimism that we can all feel, and for supporting the residents of the North Country in the way that the businesses do. Um, we definitely always are positive and moving forward in this community from the business standpoint, and it helps to gain us traction from a New York State level and a federal level on behalf of Gary and the Chamber of Commerce. So kudos to the businesses for uh, feeling optimistic about the North Country. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Thanks, Gary. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, what, what Gary said. I've been around here over 20 years, I guess, and I've seen the transformation uh, as well from a highly parochialized, if that's a, that's a word, uh, environment here and, uh, and business community to one that really pulls together. And I think that has uh, a great deal to do with uh, you know, the, the, the local support that we give our businesses, the local support that we give the chamber, um, and the, uh, the attitude of the local uh, community that wants to support uh, this region and, and the businesses that are in this region. And I think that's felt by the businesses, and I think it's reflected by the, the confidence, <coughs> the confidence uh, index. Uh, there are days that I do feel like that canary in the coal mine, uh, probably more often than I'd like to admit, uh, but as uh, you know, as I take a look at, at what we're able to accomplish here on the local level, uh, as opposed to what happens on the national level, uh, it, it's certainly reflected in this index. Uh, government shutdown certainly erode uh, confidence at the national level, but when we see the efforts of economic development uh, and what's being done in the state, uh, I think we all feel that there's a more optimistic uh, uh, view uh, and certainly about the next year on um, what it will bring on us. And that's my attitude anyway. Thank you. I'm going to put three folks on the spot. We have three of our uh, key local elected officials, and I'll uh, invite them uh, in turn. They'd like to add a comment. Billy? Billy Jones, chair of the Franklin County Legislature. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, used to this. <laughs> survey the 88% support for uh, approval of the proposed occupancy tax is, uh, is unbelievable. Uh, I walked into the room uh, at the North Country Economic Development Council last year and uh, with Gary, Gary's encouragement we put up a resolution in support of the occupancy fee. Now if you we're all business people and elected officials here when you walk into a room and you say well I'm coming in here and I want your support on a tax. Usually, you would get thrown right out of the room. But I think, I know, the North Country Economic Development Council, the North Country Chamber, the business owners in this community realize what that fee, I hate to even call it a tax, what that fee has done for this community. And uh, it's, it's proven. I don't know if you read the article or the the articles from Essex County, uh, I think it was last week, in the, in the Plattsburgh Press, uh, I think they're approaching one point something million, uh, one, uh, and the goal is two million. I mean, it is proven, it is worth, sales tax goes up with the occupancy fee. Now if the occupancy fee didn't work, you would think sales tax would be going down. It doesn't, it works. I will only say I thank you, I thank the North Country, uh, Chamber of Commerce for their support in this. We really need it in Franklin County. It's we're, I'll say it once. I, I've said it once. I'll say it a million times. We are paying the fee anyway. Franklin County residents are paying that fee wherever they go anyway. We're just not getting the benefit from it right now. 
So I thank you for your support, Gary, and that, you. and uh, really appreciate it. And the business community is behind it. I would like to tell our state representatives, I, I'm pretty sure the governor knows it, but our state representatives, <coughs> not our state representatives, the state representatives all around the state, that the business community is behind it because it works. They wouldn't be behind it if it didn't work. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Mayor Allen. <coughs> You got yourself into these things when you decided to run. Yeah, I know, I know. Jeepers, jeepers. Well, listen. I think that that the obvious, really good news here is that we're we're optimistic. Uh, we're we're very positive. Uh, I think that's something that we're seeing in our government as well. I know that when I meet with our department heads and talk about what the future is is likely going to look like, there's a great deal of optimism there. There's optimism around our council table. It reflects what happens in the business community. I mean, the strength of the business community really turns out to be the strength of our local government. So, 92, 94 next year? I think so. So I think, we, I think, we get, I think we're going to see things continue to improve, and, and I know that uh, that's really been very, very good for the city. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Supervisor Vassa. I know you're shy, but if you could get a comment out of here. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Yeah, um, it's great to see Jim here. Uh, certainly it's great numbers. I think we all sit there and kind of curl our toes in our shoes until the cover comes off. You, you want the optimism. Beyond the optimism, though, and, and it was brought up a little bit, there, there are some other things that are changing and there are causes. Uh, optimism is an emotion. What, what drives that emotion is, is really uh, pretty important. You've probably all heard Bob Smith say, a number of times in the past he says it less lately because I think he sees it happening. When the people lead, the leaders will fall. Um, we've gotten the people involved. They had to. These numbers could have easily gone a different direction not long ago. But the leaders have become involved and the leaders are involved with each other. Uh, the mayor and I are, have got some exciting things coming up and you know, really a regional approach to, to leadership, to government working with this business. Uh, I know our team were fortunate to host uh, Nova Prevost, uh, uh, Neuros, uh, Fujitsu, Schluter. They're, they're names that aren't typical North Country, and it reflects even beyond the Canadian border, which is significant. But our team sits down now, and they kind of get our little sprocket in that wheel that we've got to be business friendly. When we have a proposal come forward, we, we don't see it as work, we see it as opportunity. When there is a challenge, we like to you know, make a call, make a call to our, our colleagues politically, uh, neighboring municipalities, the chamber, whoever we can work with to help this business drive some roots into the ground in the North Country. So I think there's, I, I've seen in the, the nine years I've been around, a real change in activity that I think generated the optimism that, and Gary mentioned it earlier, as opposed to that parochial thought, I'll lose if you win. Uh, if the business locates in the city or the town, it's almost irrelevant. They're in Plattsburgh, they're in the North Country. If it's Franklin County, they're coming in, they're driving through. We've got to have a larger presence. But I see the things happening in business, in the community, in government, that really should continue to make those who haven't come yet desire to be here. So, I mean, just great news. It is an exciting time. And I look forward to being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Questions? Uh, uh, we'll be available <laughs> for media afterwards, but if you have uh, a question now, we'll take it. Yeah. Is uh, any thought ever gone into having a weighted poll on this? Obviously, a business with 200 people voting yes or no on this. Is has much more impact uh, on a weighted basis than a business with one or two employees. We can you know, look at that. We can, we can see if, uh, if the technology we use allows us to, to kind of do that. That's something we can look at. It's just one more question: How many employees do you have? You know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it would give you a weighted thing, you know, because obviously one. The only, the, only, the only thing we'd have to think about is, is that is that we do a short confidentiality when you start identifying. You start kind of identify employers a little bit, maybe in some cases we could start identifying more our employees. So we'd have to think about that. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll give that some thought for next year. Well, yeah, I'm going to 
release that, but as yeah, part of your yeah. total here, you can say that on a weighted can, basis. If we can do it in a way that they're confident, it's not identifying them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll be available for those of you in the media afterwards. Thank you all for coming.